Hello there, Anthony Cusimano here, Solutions Evangelist at Veritas, and I am so excited to reintroduce you all to my newest best friend, Amber Ved, a technical director here at Veritas who is just making ginormous strides in how we protect Kubernetes data. Now today, he's gonna to be showing us exactly how we can automate the protection of a Kubernetes namespace from within NetBackup 9.1. Automation is pretty important, as you all know. I myself have automated it so that I can yell at my phone to unlock my front door but I think protecting Kubernetes data might be just a little bit more important. So without further ado, Amber, why don't you show us something awesome? In this video, we are gonna talk about how to apply protection to a Kubernetes namespace using NetBackup. The underlining assumption in this video is that the NetBackup Kubernetes operator service has already been deployed and NetBackup is already pre-configured to talk to the Kubernetes cluster. Once those two things are already done, applying protection is very simple. I will log in as a root user, but you could log in as a Kubernetes administrator. Once you log in, you could go to workloads and find Kubernetes tab. If you click on Kubernetes tab, and if everything was already pre-configured, you should see multiple namespaces depending upon your cluster. As you could see, the cluster is already pre-configured and discovery status is already marked and good. We are going to apply protection to a namespace called MySQL. Before we apply it and do a little bit more details about applying protection, let's go to the Kubernetes cluster uh, and make some necessary changes to the MySQL application that is running. I'm going to log on to the kubectl uh, using kubectl to the cluster, go into the namespace, for the application called MySQL and validate that MySQL was already running. And if it is running, then I'm going to do the following three or four items. I'm going to create a new database within the MySQL instance that is running. Create a table within that. Insert some data into that table and verify that the data is already inserted. Once this thing is done, then we can go to net backup and try and apply protection. So we are under MySQL instance uh, under the pod. Just look at all the databases. Create a new database called MessageDB. Within that database, let's create a new table, same uh, call messages. And under this database, let's insert some data. And finally, and finally verify that the data is already inserted. Now let's exit and go back to NetBackup. As you have seen, we have already applied changes to MySQL database. Now let's try and apply protection. So the number one step to apply protection is to create a protection plan in NetBackup. In this case, we can go to protection tab, uh, within which you will find protection plans. Once we click on that, we are able to create a new protection plan. I will name it as Kubernetes or KTS protection plan. Select the workload as Kubernetes. Click next. We can add a schedule if you want this protection plan to have a specific schedule. So I'll randomly choose something for now, but you could make this uh, fit your organization requirements. Finally, you get, get an option where you are allowed to choose if even if there are non-catastrophic failures within the backup. Once you've selected everything, the new protection plan is ready to be used. Let's go back to the Kubernetes uh, tab under workloads. Find our targeted namespace, in this case MySQL, and let's do a backup now. That essentially allows us to do instantaneous backup. 
of this namespace. I'll choose the protection plan which we have recently created and trigger the manual backup. Once the backup is created, you could basically monitor the progress of your backup job by going to the respective job and looking at the details tab. As you could see, the backup has been triggered. Now let's wait for the job to complete for a few minutes. As you can see, the backup job has been marked completed uh, successfully. You can look at various uh, details about the jobs and uh, what got backed up uh, within the details tab. In the end, you should be able to see the protection or the recovery point available for this, uh, this namespace. Thank you, Amber, for showing us just how simple it is to protect and recover Kubernetes data directly from NetBackup 9.1. Now, NetBackup is incredibly flexible. If you are a Kubernetes admin, a site reliability engineer, or some kind of DevSecOps-minded person, we also have role-based access controls that allow you to have self-service protection and recovery of the assets that matter to you most. And also, we have a robust set of APIs that you can leverage to integrate into your existing automation tools to create your own data protection workflows. Again, my name is Anthony Cusimano, and I thank you all for watching today. Here's hoping your data is protected, secure, and recoverable.